All right. Blessed be the name of the Lord, people of God. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet on this beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful Wednesday evening. Amen. I pray that you all have had a blessed day. It's been a busy day in our neighborhood or in this area. Uh, talking about the DMV with everything that took place this morning. Uh, I was watching the news all day. I said, you know, it's just some rough stuff I hate going on in the world. So anyway, I think I'm going to have difficulties with my live stream today, so I'm not going to worry about it. Try it one more time. All right, so let us pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, we just come before you on this Wednesday evening, Lord God, just to tell you that we love you. Just to let you know that we are just so thankful, Lord God, just to be able to to just just to be able to openly praise you, Lord God, just to be able to openly just come into the house of the Lord, just to lift up your name, Lord God. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will continue to use this Bible study, Lord God, just to prick our hearts, Lord God. Show us uh, 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 changes that we may need to make, Lord God. Help us to get a greater understanding of why intimacy with you is so important, Lord God. And so, Father, I, I thank you for those that are in the room, Lord God. I thank you for those that are tuning in via live stream. Father, I pray that if anybody else is traveling on their way, allow them to make it to the house of the Lord safe and sound. Father, we honor you. And Father, if we've done anything on this day that was not pleasing in your sight, Father, we ask you right now to forgive us. Father, we know that you know all things, but sometimes you just want us just to come to you and just be honest about what it is that we've done. And so, Father, individually, we take an opportunity right now, Lord God, to repent, to confess our faults to you, Lord God. And we ask you to forgive us, to wash us whiter than snow, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would just allow us just to have a good time uh, as we go forward in, in this teaching on tonight. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You all may be seated. We are going to continue with part two of our teaching. Uh, we are on the message series, Do You Have a War Room? Amen. And so uh, before I actually get started, is there anybody that has any uh, testimonies, anything that they would like to share, anything different that they've done since uh, we came together? Anybody? Anybody? Just asking. Give them the opportunity. Pass the microphone back to that young lady on that row. Thank you very much. I actually started lines. Um, so many people came to mind that it was just crazy. I even went and bought some little old color-coded post-it notes. <laughs> so uh -huh. I could color code. Um, I can hear you. I'm going to talk. So I, I just started mine. All right, all right. Anybody else? Anybody else? So, look, in the midst of you starting yours, uh, anything stand out to you? How do you feel about it? I feel that I need to... Give it a mic. Give it a mic. Amen. Well, I don't have a whole lot of space, so I actually put it in my laundry room. And I don't want it this. I guess I'm going to have to go by that board that you say you have because I don't want to sit in the laundry room. It's kind of mm -hmm. it's kind of dark. And, you know, it's really, you can't sit on the washing machine. You can't sit on the dryer. So I am I know you said that you have a board and you sit in front of your board. So I'm going to have to buy a board. Amen, amen. Has anybody else taken the opportunity since we actually started the teaching to at least start or is everybody just still doing the same old thing that they was doing? Did anybody? I would like to see a red show of hands, but I ain't going to set you up like that. Amen. I just pray that it... Oh, come on. I started cleaning mine up. Bless the Lord. That's the floor picker, y'all, for those that are tuned in. <laughs> That's the one that will be trying to pray and in the midst of it, end up being distracted. And so... Yeah, I just removed some old prayers that I had on the wall. Some new stuff up and just started redoing my wall, but that's it. I couldn't. God still didn't tell me to get on the floor, but when He do, I will. Here you go. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> so, what if you don't have a specific prayer that you want? What if you just have somebody's name? 
and you don't have anything that you're praying for specifically for that person, is that okay? Because could it come to you at a later time or something? I mean, I believe that if you just have somebody's name on your war room wall, excuse me, as you're sitting in the presence of the Lord, he will begin to just give you what you need to pray about as you look at their name or call it, bring it to your remembrance. I mean, so it's not like you have every single word written out that you're going to pray for an individual. Okay. Sometimes it is just the name. Sometimes it's things in particular. So, okay. you know, you have some folks? No. Okay, amen. And so the bottom line is, people of God, I pray that with this teaching that you will really understand the importance of actually taking out the time to be intimate with God. Because that's what it's really about. It's about being intimate with God. You know, as I said on Sunday, in Sunday service, I said when you think about intimacy between a husband and a wife, married people often want more intimacy. Well, guess what? God wants more intimacy with you. And so if we can understand how it is when we're lacking intimacy and how frustrating that could be and things of that nature and how good it is when the intimacy is going on, guess what? It's the same thing with the Lord. When you have those intimate moments with the Lord, trust me, it's for your benefit. It's something that you're going to enjoy. It's for you. It's something that we need. So, you know, the reality of it is, people of God, we got we to gotta get beyond the outer court. Hello, we need to get beyond the outer court and begin to go into the inner court. We need to take our personal relationship with God to another level. We need to stop being saved but stagnant. Can I say that again? We need to stop being saved but stagnant in our walk. Amen? And so, one of the things that I, I want to do with this particular teaching, each time we come and we start it, I want to actually share uh, the part from the movie because I like it. Amen. When the young lady was actually praying. So that's how I'm going to start out each time. Is that all right? All right. And so in the movie, The War Room, you had the woman that finally understood her authority and she began to walk through her house and she began to pray. And so she said, I don't know where you are, devil, but I know you can hear me. You have played with my mind. And had your way long enough. No more. You are done. Jesus is the Lord of this house. And that means that there is no place for you here anymore. So take your lies, your schemes, and accusations and get out in Jesus' name. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my children. And you sure can't have my man. This house is under new management, and that means you are out. And another thing, I am so sick of you stealing my joy, but that's changing too. My joy doesn't come from my friends. It doesn't come from my job, and it doesn't even come from my husband. My joy is found in Jesus, and just in case you forgot, he has already defeated you. So go back to hell when you are alone and leave my family alone. I feel that every time I declare that. Amen? And so, <laughs> I'm telling you, I told y'all that was the part of the movie that just had me sights. Amen? Because, you know, when you take that authority and you begin to declare and speak some things and even come against the enemy. See, because a lot of times we're defeated because we are not in our war room and we don't understand the purpose of the war room. It ain't a place to just pit on pal. It's about war. And that's what we're going to deal with today. And so I'm not going to do a review from last week, but we're going to get straight into uh, where I want to start today. And Minister Folks, you asked me some of the scriptures that's on my war room, on my war room uh, 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 poster board, I have certain foundational scriptures. And, and I have the foundational scriptures, but then under certain people's names, I may have certain scriptures for what it is that I'm praying for them about. But my foundational scriptures are uh, James chapter 5, verse 13 through 18. I have Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. I also have Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20. And I also have Psalm 27, 
verse 7 through 8 and 13 through 14. So let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, just so you can see one of the scriptures that I have on there. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, is one of the foundational scriptures that I have on my war room wall. And so it says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So even when you think about your world, Sometimes in life, we're going through different things. And we try to fight these battles in the natural. When we're not dealing with natural situations. And when you often try to fight battles in the natural, you will find yourself overtaken and stressed and filled with anxiety and things of that nature. But when you get in the presence of the Lord, when you get into your world and you begin to commune with God and you begin to make your request known to God in the midst of everything that's going on, I promise you, he will bring you a peace that surpasses all over all understanding. He will guard your heart. He will guard your mind. He will speak to you in the midst of you being in that place. And so that's just one of my scriptures, but I told you the other ones. And so, let's talk about what is a war room. When I looked at that word war room, it is a room from which a war is directed. So if you think about it, a lot of times in military, you have a lot of people gathered in a particular room, and they are dealing with the battle that's really taking place. They're not in the battle in that particular room, but that's the place where they come together and they strategize about how to come against the enemy. It's a war room. When you think about it, a war room is a room from which business or political strategy is planned and, care and current battle situations are monitored. People of God, we must never ever forget that we are in a battle. We are in spiritual warfare. And in order for you to know how to fight this battle, you need to be able to go into the war room and get the strategy that you need to be able to deal with the things that will come your way. It's a war room. And so never forget that, believers, that we are battling. And never ever forget what we are battling against. Turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. I say this is another one of the foundational scriptures that's on my war room uh, uh, poster board in my uh, war room. I want to read this one from the Amplified Version. So if you have a tablet, phone, whatever the case may be, you want to put it on the Amplified. If not, just listen or uh, uh, just read along in the version that you have, but it will read different. Amplified Version. I'm going to look at Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 10. And so as believers, we must never forget that we are in a war. And we must never ever forget what we are battling against. And so the word of God says in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Meaning, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God. For his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armored soldier. His precepts, his word, amen, is like the armor of a heavily armored armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully because you have a lot of individuals that are not successful in this spiritual war that we are in so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits 
of the devil. Because how many of y'all know the devil is on a mission? And he is constantly pulling out all type of schemes and strategies and always laying all kind of wild so that you can get caught up and get off track. And so the reality of it is we need to be mindful of this. Verse 12. It goes on to say, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Because a lot of times when you're going through in your life, a lot of your struggles, you think it's between another person. You think it's the person on your job. You think it's your husband. You think it's your wife. You think it's your church member. You think it's all these other individuals, and you fail to realize the spirit that's really operating behind them. See, the devil gets his best work done through a body, a human body. Can he be cast into pigs like we saw in the Bible? Yes. But the reality of it is you got to understand that evil spirits get their best work done through another individual. That's why sometimes you got to be able to look at a person and refuse to allow yourself to go there because you understand the spirit that's operating in them. But oftentimes, because we're not in tune, because we're not where we need to be, we want to go toe-to-toe with the person instead of realizing it's the enemy. And when you understand it's the enemy, then you know how to deal with it effectively. Sometimes when you realize it's the enemy, you have to go into your war room and say, Lord, I need help. What do I do? How do I handle this situation? I don't want to go off in my own strength and power. But God is getting to me. I need you to speak to me. And so guess what? When you are in your war room, he will begin to give you strategy as to how to fight the battle that you're in. And so we must never forget what we're against. And so verse 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places, meaning supernatural places. Therefore, Basically, now that you understand this, now that you understand what you are contending with, the word of God says, therefore, put on the complete armor of God. Not just the helmet. Not just carry your sword, but leave everything else alone. Put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. We sing songs about we have the victory or my name is victory. Do we really know that? Do we really understand, again, the magnificent Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us that is victorious over any demon in hell? Come on now. Do we realize what we have? And so, therefore, put on the complete arm of God so that you may be able to successfully successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger, having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground. Having tightened the wide band of truth, What is that? Personal integrity. Personal integrity. You need the wide band of truth because the enemy is going to come and test your integrity. Like I say a lot of times, what do you do when you're outside of church? What do you do when you're home alone? What do you do when you think nobody else knows what you're doing? Because the enemy is going to come and test your character. But when you have on the wide belt of truth, you'll be able to stand with the different things that he brings your way. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and the readiness, the readiness produced by the good news, above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of 
of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific request. Specific request. You got to make it plain when you're communing with God. One thing about it, yes, he's an all-knowing God. But sometimes you need to make your request known. You need to make clear the supplications that you are bringing before him. And so with all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests. At all times, on every occasion, and in every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. And so, I love the Amplified Version for that particular passage of Scripture. It gives you a lot of extra details, break down different words and things in that nature. And so, we oftentimes think our battle, again, is with the person that we see. Again, our children, our wife, our husband, our boss, our church member, our brother, our sister, when for real it's not. It's not against them individuals. It's the spirit that may be operating through them. And so the spirit that may really just be after you that's using them. Do you realize that the enemy knows you? The enemy oftentimes is aware of what God wants to do through you and in your life. And because he don't want you to accomplish what it is that you're supposed to do, sometimes the enemy will use the person closest to you because he's trying to get to you. You got to understand, that person may just be a body that the enemy is using, but for real, the enemy is after you. The enemy wants you to blow your witness. The enemy wants you to let go of your testimony. The enemy wants you to act like a fool. And so sometimes... It ain't even about the other person. It's what the enemy is really trying to do to you. And so we need to be mindful. And so your war room will reveal what's what and give you strategy. Sometimes you can be in the midst of your war room in an intimate time with God. And what you perceive to be one way, God will show you that ain't what's going on. Let me show you was really taking place when you're in that place and you're communing with him about a situation. Sometimes the way we think is the way we think, but that don't always mean it's the right thing. So sometimes when you're in your moment of praying, your war room, he will reveal to you what's really going on. And so, you cannot win a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. It's impossible. You will lose every time. And when I think about carnal weapons, what are they? Your flesh and your feelings. Your flesh and your feelings. Anybody tripping over your feelings because they change like the weather. They up one day, down the next. The bottom line is you can't allow your feelings to dictate and control you. And so you cannot win a spiritual battle with carnal weapons, your flesh and your feelings. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians, many of us are familiar with this passage of scripture. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 4, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. You got to know what you got. You have to know what you're equipped with. I never forget, I did a message before talking about beware, I'm strapped. See, one thing, I, you know, in the streets, you carry a pistol, whatever the case may be. You always were strapped, had your peace. Believers, we need to always be strapped. You need to be constantly carrying what you need on the inside of you to deal with all the stuff that's going to come your way. But a lot of times we're walking around with no armor and we definitely ain't strapped. And so the next thing you, you realize, the devil just beating us up left and right. And so we have to understand we got to be prepared. I think about, you know, being in the military. We're in a war. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. 
And the bottom line is a lot of times people get into the military and they go through boot camp. But I mean, the only way I can say it, they just punk out, they ain't making it. They ain't going to the next level. We ain't got no time for punks in the kingdom, and I say it all the time. And so when you think about it, you will, have, you will deal with so much stuff that will try you in the midst of boot camp. And if you soft, and if you, you know, you can't take any pressure, you're going to buckle under pressure, and you ain't going to make it to that next level. Do we realize, come in, Deacon James, you know I like to use examples. Now, you was in the military. They say I'm a cadet just, just, just coming in. And you're the drill sergeant. And we got to understand how the enemy is sometimes. We'll be all up in our face trying to pressure us and cause us to buckle. Do me like the drill sergeants would do y'all sometimes. And y'all just have to stand there and thank you. I mean, for real. Come on, because we got to understand, you know, this is how the enemy is. That trouble don't let up. Come on. And, I, and, and the thing is, now, I, I, ain't, I ain't made it over. I ain't graduated yet. I'm, I'm still in training. Come on. <laughs> okay, be a drill. Speak. Speak. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> they ain't just standing there looking at you. so much is that prayer is so powerful and that's the one thing 
you can't get people to do. We couldn't even continue with the prayer line. Because even though individuals could be in the comfort of their own home, do you think individuals who was willing to sacrifice 30 minutes? Now I'll tell you this. Many of us, the core is here, most of us were sacrificed. Most of us would be on the line and we did it for years. But it got to the point. When you look at the overall picture, if we really believe in the power of prayer, it's a trip. We will always want people to pray for us. You know, I, 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 I want the church to pray, pray for me. But you couldn't be on the line and pray for nobody. The very things that we know is important, we don't necessarily do. People will want prayer, but they couldn't sacrifice 30 minutes of their own time to pray for others. But yet I always want prayer. The bottom line is prayer is powerful. And it's the one thing that's lacking in the lives of many believers. It's the one service, I promise you, that won't be packed out in a church. Let me call prayer. The few that come from Bible study, I promise you, they won't be in prayer. Now, I'm just saying, because that's how serious it is. Oh, if we say, well, we're going to have prayer on Friday night. You have the time you can't get people to come to Bible study. But then to try to get people to come to a prayer service on a Friday. But guess what? I ain't trying to get y'all to come to a prayer service. I'm trying to get you to pray in your own home. I'm trying to get you to pray on a consistent basis to the God that you serve. I'm trying to get you to understand how important prayer really is. We say, and we all know a lot of stuff that we know is good for us, but we don't always tap into it. And so, in that secret place, your inner room becomes your war room. It becomes a place where you fight battles. It becomes a place where you fight battles with sin. Uh-huh. You got some sin issues. You got some struggles. Your secret sins that don't nobody know about but you. Guess what? It's in your war room where you can fight that battle. Where you can come clean before God and talk to him about your struggle for real and ask him to really help you. If you are serious about getting free, I promise you if you get in your war room, and you take it before God. He will help you with it. But some of us haven't humbled ourselves enough to be able to go to that place and say, God, I need you to help me. I have a foul mouth, Lord. I'm always cussing. I'm always gossiping. I'm always being honest with God in that place. And say, God, I need you to take this from me because I know it don't please you. I need you to remove this thing or show me what I need to do to stop. Come on. <laughs> Let me say this. Uh, Reverend Mary Mitchell, bless the Lord. She said, prayer is the portal that brings the power of heaven down to earth. It is the kryptonite. Come on, man. I like that. It is the kryptonite to the enemy and to all his ploys against you. I like that. It is the kryptonite. To the enemy. Come on. So it's safe to say that you'll have a prayer room forever. Because this will always be somebody up on that wall that you need to pray for. You will always need to pray for yourself. <laughs> okay. Forever. Forever. Yes. Yes. It's not something that's only going to be there for a month. It ain't a 30 day fast. Exactly. Forever. <laughs> Jesus, okay, calm down. He wants this intimacy forever. <laughs> and so, <laughs> in your war room, it is a place where you fight battles with sin. It's a place where you fight battles with conflict. You may have an issue with your brother or sister in Christ. You may have an issue with a person on your job. It's in that war room that you can deal with that conflict and God will begin to show you how to handle that. It is in that war room that the very person that you hate, the very person that you can't stand, that he will tell you to begin to pray for them. Mm -hmm. 
And as you begin to pray for them, next thing you know, God is working on their heart because he's the one that can change the heart of a king. Amen. But while you're praying, he's hearing your prayers. He knows that you don't like this conflict and you really want it to change. And you're like, God, help me. Help me to help myself to do what's right. Praying for that person. Next thing you know, things begin to change. Why? Because prayer moves mountains. Prayer changes things. It's in that place where you fight battles uh, with sin, conflicts. It's in that place where you make decisions. Sometimes you don't know what to do. Too many people make decisions based off of their feelings instead of hearing God. And can I tell you this? Half the time, what God want ain't going to line up with your feelings. Because sometimes you feel it angry. You feel it mad. You feel it used and abused. But when you get in that war room, he ain't tapping into your feelings. He going to speak to you when it needs to be done. Love him anyhow. Love your enemy. Do what you know to do. Don't retaliate. Whatever the case may be. When it's in that place where you need to make a decision and you don't know what to really do, he will begin to speak to you. He will give you clarity. He will take away the confusion when you are in that place and you're intimate with him. Because you need to make a major decision and you don't want to do things too quick before him, out of his will. And if you get still, if you become intimate, he will begin to just speak to you just like, it's like, wow. And so, your decision. A lot of times we need to make decisions. First thing we do is pick up the phone and call somebody. Mm. It's nothing wrong with seeking wise counsel. And I don't have a problem with that because the Bible tells us to. But oftentimes we're seeking counsel from somebody else before we even went to God. But decisions. Because we're constantly faced with decisions. Decisions that could change your life. For the better or for the worse. It's in that place where you deal with difficulty. Till we fully surrender in obedience to God. So when you're bringing all those things before him in your world, it's get to a point where you fully surrender in obedience to him with how he wants you to deal with those situations. And obedience to God in the war room may be totally opposite of what you want or what you think should be done. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, and we're just going to look at verse 6 through 9. I need somebody to read that for me. Isaiah 55. It's a trip. God a trip. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you, God is showing the opposite of your flesh. And when you are sincere, even though you may be struggling with something, he will show you what to do. And how many of y'all know sometimes it kills your flesh? It goes against everything that you thought, everything that you thought God was going to be in agreement with, because you have said, God, this is the reason why this should take place, because of A, B, C, and D, and he come back with something else. And you like, are you serious? <laughs> you got jokes? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 through 9. Read it for us, Dick and James. Isaiah chapter 55, not, no, no, verse 8 through 9. 8 through 9. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. That's why right. he is the repair of the breach. Come on. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm. nor are, it, are your ways my ways, says the Lord. What? I mean, God. You don't understand. I've been on this job all this time, and don't you see... How they talk to me. Don't you see how they treat me? That lady is so mean to me. And, 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 and I feel like that right about now, I've humbled myself long enough. And I feel like by now, I should be able to just go and say something to him and, and just get it all out. And he may say, that ain't what I want you to do. Take her out to lunch and just talk. What? That don't make sense to your mind? His thoughts ain't like your thoughts? We we'll never understand why he wants us to do certain things because they go against our flesh. Come on, sir. For as the heavens are, the, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For that, that's it, that's it. Because the bottom line is, the way we think ain't how God thinks. 
And when we go into that intimate place with us, he will begin to show us how our thinking is off. And he will begin to realign our thoughts with his thoughts so that in the war room we can begin to take on the mind of Christ. He don't think like us. Praise the Lord. And, then we, and all of us need to be happy about that. <laughs> yeah, he don't think like us because uh, we would have been done away with ourselves if it was up to, if he thought like us. Amen. Anyway, so when Paul discusses that we are fighting against, uh, what we're talking about fighting against in Ephesians, he talks about the armor. He told us that we're fighting against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. And then in Ephesians, he went deep into uh, the armor. And that's what I want to talk about. So here, everybody take one of these copies. Amen. I wanted you to see a physical. Some people need physical uh, pictures to help them to really see something. And so I wanted to give you a physical picture of a man in armor. And we're going to talk about the different pieces of the armor. Amen. And so when you look at this particular uh, uh, picture that we have here, uh, dealing with the armor of God, uh, the first piece that you see at the top is the helmet. Oh, everybody need to get the picture. Excuse me, I'll slow down. Amen. Colin says, pray ye for one another. God himself gave such instructions. We know God's word is yea and amen. He is the repair, repair of the breach. And only when you call on him from the depths of your heart, he responds in a manner that blows one's mind. Yes, yes. Everybody have their paper? All right. So let's deal with the helmet of salvation. You have the helmet of salvation. What does it say under that particular picture? Uh, uh, get the microphone and read it for us, Vernon. The helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation by believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again. Amen. Put it on by believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again. Now I want to talk about the physical. I want to talk about the physical piece and related to the spiritual piece. Amen. Because when you think about a helmet, what does the helmet cover? It covers your mind. Amen. Which is major. And so the helmet is a piece of equipment that covers the head. It covers the mind. How many of y'all know the mind alone is a major battlefield? Do y'all realize that that's where the battles really start? In your mind. And so it's important that you are covered. Your mind is covered with the helmet of salvation. It's important that your mind is protected because the enemy is going to come in your mind. He will plant thoughts in your mind. Once they get there, what are you going to do? You need to be able to call back the word of God that tells you to cast down every imagination. Cast down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You need to call back the word of God to say, think on these things that are good, think on these things that are pure. Because he'll put impure thoughts in your head. He'll put evil thoughts to kill somebody in your head. Come on now, your people with anger issues. He'll put thoughts in your head. And it's at that moment you need to know how to deal with them thoughts. You have to protect your mind like never before. And so the helmet protects our thinking. The head is the most vulnerable part of the body according to the Bible dictionary. Let me tell you something. When I was doing this study, that thing rang out in my spirit like never before. Can I say that again? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this. The head is the most vulnerable part of the body, according to the Bible dictionary, when talking about the arm of God. Does that hit anything in anybody's spirit besides mine? Yeah. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. What did it hit? What did it hit? Yeah. My spirit. <laughs> 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 he said his spirit. Yeah. No, I think when you talk about the head, I'm, I'm thinking about... Uh, Different, different aspects of that. Come on, talk. Head. I mean, even like the family structure. Hello. The husband. Uh huh. You know. That's. Most, go ahead. Most, that's that's the most vulnerable. I mean, you get to the to the head. I mean, 
the rest is be out of order. Just, just about be it's a weekend. Yes. Um, That's good. The, the, the pastor of the church. The he. You know, the, the leader of any ministry. Um, anything. Amen. President of the United States, anybody. Amen. Good. Yeah, that's good. Come on. Oh, come on, Vernon. Thank you. Thank you. That was one of them right there. Um, Psych. You see things that will uh, set you off. Improper stuff. Or someone can say something to you, mm -hmm. and you're going to hear that. Mm -hmm. And we being who we are, we're going to take it personal. And yes. something we see, like we're watching TV and a commercial come on, and it's seductive. You want to turn away from it, but then you feel like, okay, if I turn away from it, then I got to turn back to get to this show, and I don't feel like changing every time I see the channel. So it has a way of touching you through those avenues. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hearing and then you got taste all up here in your head, huh? Yes, all up in your upper region. You know, uh -huh. you don't, you, you know, you have a thing with chocolate cake, you know, you don't, you know, you, you know, you're not supposed to, you don't want it, mm -hmm. but then you see it on TV or in a text you, message they burn and send you. I sure did. So then you go ahead and you see that, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I, I do apologize, I'm just kidding, I, I do apologize for that. It was good though. And you and you're like I want it, mm -hmm. but then it's like I don't. But if I eat it, I'm giving in, mm -hmm. and that's not what you want to do. Because you know what the, the effects of it will be. Mm -hmm. Come on, Angelita, pass the mic back. You chop off the head, dead. You gone. I thought about John the Baptist. Once they cut his head, you gone. You, you cut off somebody's head, that's it. Gone. Gone. Come on. So I come on. Right. I thought about a football player and getting hit so hard, his helmet pops off, now he's brain dead, he's, he's just shut down. His whole system is shut down because once your mind is shut down, your whole body just shuts down. And like they said, the head of the household, the head of a church, it, mother folks, if you cut the head off, you just gone. Mm -hmm. Pass it to Mary. Well, if you get to the head, it goes to the heart. Yes. It will get down in that heart. Yep. Come on, Deke. You got something, Cheryl? Okay. <laughs> also, you know, when you talk about the head, you talk, you, you, of course, you're talking about the mind. And the mind, you know, our human bodies, we can't do anything without our mind. So our mind gives us signals to our, mm -hmm. to our body to yeah, tell us exactly. tell what to do. Exactly. We can't do nothing without it going through our mind first, <laughs> without, mm -hmm. you know. So when you think about the, uh, the 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 head of anything, even when you talk about a, a, a war, you know, a lot of times the enemy is trying to take out the leader mm -hmm. or the the leadership, mm -hmm. you know, the head person, because a lot of times. Stuff breaks down once the strategy, the 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 the, the war plan, the, the game plan, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Even when you, think, when you think about a basketball game, a lot of times that 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 best player, they gonna try to double team that player, mm -hmm. you know, because it, once they take that person out, they have a more likely chance to win, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how I look at it. And, and it's major because one of the things, like y'all said. When a person can body can be alive, mm -hmm. but there are times when they say the person is a vegetable, they're brain dead. That's right. Because when their mind ain't working, the body's still functioning, but there's no life. Mm -hmm. When I thought about it and it hit me, it talks about how the head is the most vulnerable part of the body. According to the Bible dictionary, we're talking about the armor. It made me think about going back to the garden. Because the enemy was after the head. He was after the head. It makes me think about how the family structure is broken down. Because the head of homes is out of position. And so, like you say, it affects everything and everything stops functioning properly. When you think about the power of the head being in position, 
versus the power of the head being out of position is major. The most vulnerable. And so we need to protect it. And so the head is the most vulnerable part of the body according to the Bible dictionary. Now, if you do research online, Google, different things of that nature, and in general, talking about the most vulnerable part of the body, it's not going to talk about the head. I'm telling you what the Bible dictionary says. Amen? Uh, it says, uh, when talking about the armor. And as a result of that, it was the first area covered by the armor. It was like the main piece that needed to go on. The first. Because you want to take care of the most important part because that head controls everything. So it was the first part of the armor. And so just thinking about it being the helmet of salvation, salvation was the beginning for spiritual warfare for believers. When you think about it, okay, now that you're saved, yes, you're saved, you, you, you gave your life to the Lord, but now you have automatically been enlisted in battle. So salvation was the beginning of your war. And so the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness, the next piece, read the four of Vernon, what's written under there, just on the worksheet. Righteousness is being honest, good, humble, and fair to others. It means standing up for weaker people. All right. And so, it, and as we look at this, look at the picture. The breastplate of righteousness. What does the breastplate of righteousness cover? The heart. It covers and protects your heart. Thus, it can help also to guard your emotions. Just think about it. I'm trying to tie the natural with the spirit with this armor. But if you think about because one of the things Mary said is that your head needs to be protected because it will affect your heart. Yes. If them two things get in sync, yes, we'll get in this, can get down in this, and it can be problematic. But when you think about it, the breastplate of righteousness, it covers and protects your heart. Thus, it can also help to guard our emotions. Breastplate of righteousness. Because that's what it is, the breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? Guess what? Holy and upright living in accordance with God's standards. Not your standards, not grandma and them standards. Because you know grandma and them told y'all a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't right. But that's how they ran their household. No, it's according to God's standards, holy and upright living. And so guess what? When you have on the breastplate of righteousness, it should help you to live holy and upright. Righteousness should rule, not your emotions. What's holy should rule. What's right should rule, not your emotions. So you need to protect your heart so that your emotions won't rule you and you will allow righteousness to so it's not about what you think or feel. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25, it says, there is a way that what? Does anybody know that, that scripture? There is a way that seems, that seems right to a man, amen? But it is, it is the way of death. A lot of times, there's a lot of stuff that seems right to you. That don't mean it's right. So you need to make sure that your heart is protected with the breastplate of righteousness so that you can make decisions that are holy and upright, not according to you. Because a lot of times we live out like, this is what I think, this is what I do. Okay, that don't mean it's right. It's time to change your what thinking. It's time to change your heart. And so, the next piece is what? The shield of faith. Read that for us, sir. Prepare the gospel. No, the shield of faith. Oh, excuse me. The shield of faith. Faith is being sure that God will keep his promises. Faith in God protects you when you are tempted to die. Amen. So you see the shield of faith is something that a soldier holds, right? You got to hold on to your faith with everything on the inside of you. Sometimes that's the only thing that can keep you going, amen? But when you think about it, that shield of faith, and they have little things on here written out that, you know, that they elaborate on, but I'm elaborating on things that God has given me. But I think about physically. That's something that you actually hold. A shield, when you think about a military uh, armor, it was a hard object generally made of metal 
with which a warrior protected his body from the weapons of the enemy. Now, if you go back to these days when this Bible was written, they didn't have Uzis. They ain't had street sweepers. They ain't had blocks. They ain't have all of that. They a lot of times they had arrows. They had a lot of man-made, you know, equipment. And so the reality of it is, things will come their way, and they will use their shield. Y'all know how one woman used her bracelets. <laughs> but the shield was something that you would use to protect yourself from the different. Uh, 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 things that will come your way from the different weapons that will come your way. So guess what? When you think about the shield of faith, is there a scripture that comes to anybody? When you think about the, the shield and how it protect you from stuff. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. See, because then I think about the scripture when it says, no weapons formed against you shall prosper. They may come, but yes, the enemy gonna do them, but you got your shield, you blocking, you protecting, you doing all types of stuff. It's penetrating, it's hitting the shield, but guess what? It ain't gonna prosper because it ain't gonna get to you because your faith is so strong and you got what you need to be able to protect you. As children of God, we need to know how to work our armor. We need to know how to work our armor. And so it made me think about no weapon formed against you shall so prosper. When your faith because we're talking about the shield of faith. Ooh. Faith. <laughs> Believing in those things that you can't necessarily see. <laughs> Believing. <laughs> Sometimes things in your life, they ain't where you want them to be. You got to believe beyond what you see. You got to allow, your, when you give up faith, you give up hope. And so you need your shield of faith to remain intact because of the stuff that you're going to go through in life. Come on. I look, when I think about a war, is if you're in battle, some of these things you may lose. Mm -hmm. You may drop your sword. Mm -hmm. You know, you may, you know, some may come off or you may lose your helmet. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking about it in the natural sense. Mm -hmm. But you need to hold on to that shield because, I mean, you may can't, you, you, you might can't fight with, you know, you may have to be in a position where you're just protecting yourself. Because, mm -hmm. you know, in a battle, there's, there's offense and defense. Mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, you just... You need to just hold on to protect yourself, because if I mean, if if, if you if you're dead, you can't fight. So I mean, you know what I'm saying? If you you just gotta just protect yourself sometimes. As long as you got that shield, you you always are in the in the battle, in the fight. Mm -hmm. You're still fighting, and I think about fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still able to fight. And like, you know, even if you were to drop your sword, you still have, in the spiritual sense, we don't always have our Bible with us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you have it in your heart. Mm -hmm. you, you know what you know. Mm -hmm. Then you're still able to fight. Mm -hmm. So, and we still have that assurance. You know, like... In the natural sense, you can lose these things, mm -hmm. but in the spiritual sense, you have them. You, mm -hmm. you know, the, the helmet of salvation, you have the assurance of salvation. You know who you are. You know who you belong to. You know your child of God. Stuff like that. I don't want to go too far because I might. <laughs> oh, I'm just listening. Go ahead. But yeah, that's, a, I, that's how I look at it. Amen. Amen. And the belt of truth, well, you ain't got there yet. Yeah, I ain't got there yet. I'm about to get there. And so... When your faith, people of God, the shield of faith, that's part of your armor. Bottom line is every day you need to be dressed with these items. Amen. You may you need to always have on your helmet. You need to always have your shield of faith. You need to always have your breastplate of righteousness on. Amen. And so when your faith remains strong, even when the weapons are formed, they won't impact you. Because it's your faith that keeps you. It's your faith that drives you. Amen. 
And so instead of hitting your shield, uh, instead of hitting you, your shield of faith will stop them and extinguish all of the enemy's fiery darts. They're going to be formed. And they will even be shot at you. But they won't prosper because your faith is strong. So you need to always have your shield of faith. Again, when you give up faith, you give up hope. You no longer believe. And so, then the belt of truth. Look at the picture. The belt of truth. Come on, Vernon. The belt of truth. Truth keeps us from giving in to world's beliefs. Compare your beliefs and action to the truth of the word of God. Amen. All right. So now you're looking at the belt of truth. The belt, when you think about the armor and you study the armor of a, a, a person, in the, uh, a, a warrior, the belt was a wide piece of metal that protected the warrior's lower trunk and stomach. Mm. The lower trunk and stomach. What stood out to me was stomach. Because when you think about stomach, does anything come to your mind? The bell of truth. Go back and read bell of truth. Bell, I'll be. Truth keeps us from giving into world's beliefs. Compare your belief and action to the truth of the word of God. The bell is a large thing that protects your lower trunk and your stomach. Immediately, I thought about appetites. When you think about stomach, your appetite. See, you need the word of truth to keep you from giving it to the world's beliefs. You need the word, the belt of truth to keep you from giving into your appetites. So you need that to protect this area because we hunger for a lot of things, but it ain't always the right things. We need the hunger and thirst for righteousness, but a lot of times we're hungering and we're thirsting, thirsting for fleshly things. We, when we hungry, we want to eat. When I want this, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get it. How many of y'all know your appetites will drive you? Got us up out of our house the other day because we wanted something. Got in our car, drove, and went to two places to get it to satisfy that appetite. Sometimes, as children of God, we will do whatever to satisfy appetite that's ungodly. So you need the bell of truth to protect and control and allow you to discipline your appetite. And so when you think about an appetite, an appetite is a natural desire to satisfy any bodily need. Any. Any bodily need or craving. It is a desire or liking for something. You need the belt of truth to keep you from giving in to those desires or those things that you crave that your flesh wants, but it goes against the righteousness. Holy and upright living according to God. And so everything, go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. The bottom line is everything we desire or like isn't what we need, people of God. Just because you like it, just because you desire it, just because you crave it, don't mean you need it. So you need the bell of truth to protect your little trunk and your stomach to keep your appetites in check. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. One simple question or one simple verse. As I, as I said, everything we desire or like isn't what we need. It says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, for her stomach, for her appetite. She saw it. Because a lot of our appetites are based off of what we see. And so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, despite what God is saying. Because, oh, yes, Lord. Despite what God is saying, your appetites will shut down what God says. Because you want that thing that bad. Your appetite can be so strong for something 
that even though you know God said this is not what you should do, that appetite say, but it's good. It's good. I want it. And so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. Her appetite, remember that word means a desire, a liking for something. She looked, she wanted it, and she gave into it. You need to be girded up with the belt of truth to keep you from giving it to your appetite. When you think about it, the Christian girded with the belt of truth will not be deceived. If you have your belt of truth on, you won't be deceived. Because that truth is going to speak to you about what's God and what's not God. But you run around half naked in the spirit. A lot of times I say, you got a lot of Christians that's just butt naked in the spirit. They get up every day and don't even be dressed with their arm. Um, just out there all willy-nilly and want to know, well, how did this happen to me? I don't even understand. You was butt naked. Where was your breastplate? Where was your helmet? Where was your belt of truth? Huh? Where was it? Where was your shield of faith? You got up and you ain't think about what you was facing each and every day. Because if we think about what we're facing each and every day, we won't leave out spiritually naked. We will be dressed for battle every day when we understand what it is that we're dealing with. But Christians get too lax. We get too lax. We get too comfortable. And so desires are often full of fleshly appetites in the natural and I'm going to end with this because we had our time but think about it we're talking about the belt of truth the belt of truth it girds up and protects the stomach the appetite area when you think about it desires are often full of fleshly appetites in the natural a belt is used to keep one's pants up. If you keep your belt of truth on, you don't have to worry about getting caught with your pants down. Mm -hmm. If you keep your belt, because you think about it, mm -hmm. you can't fall short if you keep your belt on. Right. You can get in some situations, but if you keep that belt on, you ain't got to worry about some stuff. Because it's holding things in place. So if you keep the belt of truth on, you ain't got to worry about being caught with your pants down. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm going to stop there. Amen, because we are past our time. And we will uh, pick up when we come back from Holy Convocation. Uh, uh, that will be down next week. So those of you all that are tuning in, we will not have a Bible study on next Wednesday. Uh, because it is that time of year for us. Word Harvest International Fellowship of Churches. Holy Convocation 2017, and so we won't be on the air next Wednesday or even that following Sunday on the 25th, I believe it is. But I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. Uh, um, if you want to know more about the ministry, please go to www.mbttministries.com. I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. Amen? Go in peace. All right, people of God, it's time to give it to the house of the Lord uh, as we get ready to prepare ourselves to...